Walker by an inch is Manny Flores. He's undefeated 11 KO. Should be a good one in our main event. Two more He's the pitcher, 119 and one half pounds. This young professional is perfect in 15 bouts, 15 victories, including 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the heavy handed, undefeated fighting pride of Coachella. Doesn't respect Flores at all. Flores, the taller fighter, the southpaw. Santiwan is also a southpaw, but he'll switch. Good body shot. Those guys look in great shape. Flores, trained by Tonio Diaz, also Joel Diaz in his corner. It's, it's obvious that Santiwan is going to continue to be aggressive when I mean, he's walking Flores down. Santi Ramos is sitting down on his punches. Again, all the boys fight not tonight. Mondia, Rebichis. Good body shot by Flores. 24 years old is Manny Flores. His last fight was a tough one against Franklin Gonzalez. He got a split decision. That was only eight rounds. This is his first 10 rounder. And there are no gimmies here for Golden Boy matchmaker Javier Razo, President Eric Gomez, and Oscar Deloria. Santibanez is able to split the guard. It's Santibanez who's digging to the body. Flores against the ropes. Slipping punches. Santibanez able to land a few. Now Flores landing. Uppercut from Flores. From Flores, Lance Flush. Yeah, that was a good kind of hook. Santi <laughs> yeah. Ramos doesn't care. There's that body shot and then that he shoots up the yeah. yeah. I you see know, what you're talking about. Body shot to slow him down. You said in your open game that you wouldn't be surprised if Santi comes out with this kind of approach. Yeah. No surprise at all to you? Yeah, you know, one thing that makes the fighter so dangerous is the confidence. The confidence, you know, when Sandy Baez is, you know, he has that swag. Height. So he's making it difficult for Flores right now. That's how he's shooting those shots right there. Up, down, uppercuts. And footwork. You have to use the angles. You have to stay. see right there, he did that slight, he did that step back, and then he countered with a jab. He's just doing things like that and being more consistent with it. See, Flores stays in the pocket with him, and he allows something like to double up on that uppercut. It just says like Santibán is gaining more and more confidence, and the power punches are on the side of Santibán. Body work, uppercut. Body work, uppercut. I'm sounding like a broken record, Gabe. Yep. But you know, Santibán has found something, so he's gonna he's gonna continue doing exactly. You know, with Flores staying in the pocket. If you're gonna stay in the pocket, you're gonna stay in the pocket like that to set up a trap. You gotta throw a shot right away. You can't stay in the pocket and let a guy throw four or five shots and then you're not answering back. See, like right there, what's the reason of him staying in the pocket if he's not doing anything back? Finally, Flores lands the right. And you saw Joel Diaz working on the face of Manny Flores with his own home base insoles, a bean dip can. Looks like Sandy Byers probably took this round off. Oh, there he goes with combos. <laughs> but the Flores take advantage? Yeah, Flores, you know, I think Flores was a little more consistent in this round. In this round. Like, like I said, you know, on the defense side of things, throw the shots rather than try to catch them because Sandy Byers. He doesn't stop working. Digging, digging, oh, uppercut again. He's found a home for that since the opening round. Hook from Santi Vanez. Santi Vanez looking good here. He's sitting down on his punches, splitting the guard of Flores.
See, like, where's the, where's the head movement? The Sandy Badgers is like, you're giving me three shots, I'm going to tag away. Because it's three shots. It's 10 to 1. And the one from Flores was a feint to stay away. Flores in this round, mouth wide open. We didn't know what we were going to get with something like that. As the level increases in the sport, right, in your fights, you have to make adjustments. And one thing Flores is not doing is he's not making adjustments. It's kind of like he's doing the same thing over and over. He has a moment. Yeah, if you're Flores, you're going to need a knockout. In my un very untrained eye. He's doing everything you want to see a fighter do as far as punching in different angles and you know, he's switching from orthodox to southpaw. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard to prepare against a style like this. And it's not like you, if you're gonna say, oh, they matched them too hard. No, it's 15 and 0 against 11 and 2. If you're not matching them tough like 15 and 0, what are we doing here? And there you go, Sonny Valley is throwing punches and bunches, doubling that uh, uppercut, being effective. Nobody expected this tonight, except for maybe Saki Lanez and his team. It's desperation time for Manny Flores. He needs a KO. This round. It's the first time that he's gone 10 rounds. You know, Flores, he's trying. He's trying, he just can't figure Sonny Baez out. Most of the career for Santibanez was at 122. For this one, is 118. He's like, I am so dedicated now. Heck, give me 115. I could do it for the right money. And he's definitely changed his career, changed his life. Walter Santibanez comes to Golden Boy Fight Night. That's the B side with nobody on his side. And he puts on a show against the undefeated Manny Flores. They go the distance, and we're going to go to the... Well, ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds, we go to the scorecards, and here are the totals. Eddie Hernandez has it 100 to 90. Fernando Villarreal and Sergio Caiz both score it 99-91. Your winner by unanimous decision, Walter.